Hello and welcome to the first half of our lecture on the neurophysiology of attention. Today we're going to be focusing on a relatively um, rare but very interesting uh, neurological phenomenon in which uh, people suffer injury to generally their right parietal lobe, in particular the right inferior parietal lobule, <coughs> and re results with uh, a disorder known as hemispatial neglect. Hemispatial neglect is this neurological disorder in which a patient does not attend to anything on one side. It's usually their left side. In fact, it's often called left side neglect or parietal neglect. It's most properly referred to as hemispatial neglect. The patient ignores uh, an entire side of their body. <clears throat> it's important to understand that this is an attentional phenomenon. This isn't perceptual. This isn't a motor skills problem. Uh, people with neglect can walk perfectly fine, although they will not realize that their left leg is even there. So to give you an idea of how we uh, might see some different patterns of results from hemispatial neglect patient, if they're asked to draw a clock, which is a very common kind of uh, neuropsychological assessment, is to draw a clock. It tests memory and spatial reasoning and some other um, fairly simple uh, issues. You can see here the patient has actually left off a pretty, pretty significant portion of the clock even though uh, <coughs> they know that the numbers ought to go from 1 to 12, um, they have left off a pretty significant portion of the left part of the clock. Oftentimes, patients in these cases, you can see, will bunch the numbers up, um, so all, of, all 12 numbers end up on one side of the clock. Here, uh, the patient's task was to draw a flower, or copy a draw of a flower, uh, drawing of a flower, sorry, and you can see they leave off uh, left, uh, left portion of uh, many parts of these drawings. This is called a line bisection task. Um, and what you can see is the patient's task here is to draw a line uh, straight down the middle. So essentially it should be positioned somewhere about here. But what's happened is a pretty significant portion of this line doesn't exist to this hemifacial neglect patient. And so since this is missing, they bisect the line here. Uh, this is uh, called uh, a line cancellation task. Uh, the patient's task is simply to draw a line through each of the lines on the page. So you can see they've gotten to all the ones on the right hand, but none of the ones on the left hand side of the page. So where does this damage likely to occur? Well, obviously, I've already had a little bit of discussion of this. If it's the left side, it's, of course, on the right side of the brain, because, of course, the right side controls the left side. Um, so we're going to think about this as we go through talking about hemispatial neglect. What, do we, what can we learn about attention? What can we learn about perception? And what can we learn about memory? Because each of these issues will come up uh, throughout this discussion, and then finally, sort of, what is the basis of attention? Most neglect, neglect patients have damage to the right parietal lobe. Again, this is often called parietal neglect. This is an area of the parietal lobe called the inferior parietal lobule that is most often involved. So here we see this is the right parietal lobe of a patient. Well, it's not a patient, obviously. It's potentially a patient. The drawing of a right parietal lobe uh, here. And in fact, the inferior parietal lobule is right in this area. So if we go on to this next slide, you can see this is on the left side. Sometimes you can't find the right side of the brain you want. Um, but this is the left inferior parietal lobule. It's right here at the intersection between the temporal lobe um, and the parietal lobe just past the postcentral gyrus, which is, of course, uh, the primary somatosensory cortex. So if we look at um, where um, the <coughs> attentional networks involved in spatial neglect are hemispatial neglect. They are right here sort of adjacent to uh, the dorsal visual stream, which is, of course, the where pathway. And then the ventral visual stream here is, of course, the what pathway. So this third stream is possibly part of visual attention. And you'll see in the next lecture, we'll talk about how uh, this is the part of the brain involved in orienting us to specific places in space uh, as we are trying to find things in our visual environment. So one of the things that's important to understand is neglect is not a perceptual phenomenon. It has an impact across all of its modalities. In fact, neglect patients will often even ignore parts of their bodies. 
in um, his book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, Oliver Sacks tells the story of a man who uh, was in the hospital, had had a stroke at home, and uh, wake up, wakes up in the hospital bed and believes the, pa the hospital staff has played uh, a bit of a joke on him by placing a severed human leg in bed with him. Kind of an odd joke. Um, so thinking that it's, of course, a severed human leg, he grabs a hold of the leg and throws it uh, out of bed. It's, of course, his leg, and he throws himself out of bed. In fact, the uh, chapter of the book is titled The Man Who Threw Himself Out of Bed. So it's a very puzzling phenomenon. My sister actually teaches uh, as an occupational therapy professor and has treated patients with hemispatial neglect. They will oftentimes shave one side of their face if they're a man or put makeup on one side of their face. Um, they'll fix half of their hair. They'll eat what's on one side of their plate. Um, they won't really attend to sounds on one side. Um, interestingly, if you take uh, their left hand and put it on top of their right, they'll say, uh, it's someone else's. Uh, oftentimes when you ask them, well, where is your left hand, they will think of where they had it last, and usually that's where they had their stroke. And so, for example, the man who threw himself out of bed, he said, well, I left it in the bathroom at home, um, thinking that's where he was last. Uh, what's interesting about this is patients with hemispatial neglect still have normal motor coordination, so they're able to walk because Walking doesn't require our conscious attention. Uh, it doesn't really require our, uh, much of our attention at all. It's an automatic process. It's an automatic motor program, so it can be accomplished without any conscious attention. Obviously, the will to walk is conscious, but the uh, ability to walk is completely unimpaired. Uh, similarly, they can talk. Um, patients also can be directed towards something on the neglected side if it's something automatic, so a very loud noise will automatically capture their attention if it's on the left side. Something moving very quickly auto uh, automatically capture their attention. Often, often neglect patients can catch things thrown at them on their left side. Again, all because of it bypassing the conscious attentional networks. And that's something that's really important that tells us a lot about how conscious, uh, how conscious attention works and how it's dissociable from automatic or unconscious forms of attention. And so you can get them directed towards some things on the neglected side. In fact, some of the uh, therapies for treating neglected patients is essentially to make it so they have to pay attention to that left side, putting everything they need on the left side um, so that they can eventually go back to attending to that. There are other ways to trick the brain into sort of automatically reorienting itself. It's through a process called um, caloric stimulation. The, the classic way to do this is to run hot water through one ear and cold water through another, make the patient very dizzy. When the dizziness stops, they s like the world sort of stops and all of a sudden they're perfectly oriented to both sides of the body, and then it goes back a little bit. But eventually, it actually seems to be a treatment for um, neglect. What's interesting about this is neglect actually extends to internally generated mental imagery. This is one of my favorite studies of neglect patients. It's um, about a couple of patients in Milan, Italy. Uh, these patients were in the hospital with hemispatial neglect. And they had these patients uh, imagine they were standing at the Piazza del Duomo in Milan, uh, which is a very famous piazza you can see here. You can see the cathedral on the right-hand side uh, and um, some shops or something there at the other end. Well, the um, patients were asked to imagine themselves standing at one end of the piazza or the other, at the cathedral steps or at the opposite end of the piazza. And they were asked then uh, to describe everything that they could see. So here they are facing the uh, cathedral, and they would describe everything on their right-hand side and nothing on their left, and then asked to reorient themselves to the opposite perspective. They switched to the opposite end and describe the other buildings that are now on their right. So essentially, if we go back to our earlier view, when they're standing here at the piazza, again, they're imagining standing here at the piazza. They're not actually there, but they, in their mind's eye, they can only see this part of the piazza, that right side. Now, when they switch their perspective over to this side, they can now see the other side. So it's not that they've had any difficulty in their memory. It's simply that as they're visualizing the piazza, they can't attend to anything on that left-hand side. So what's interesting about these neglect patients is some have a spatial neglect. It's everything on the right, uh, everything on one whole side. Others have an object-based neglect. So um, while they have a global ability to um, 
attend anywhere, when they finally focus on an object, sort of half of the object kind of disappears. Uh, patient with right, patients with right hemisphere damage tend to have a more severe form of neglect. What's interesting also is that priming st studies show patients process information on that neglected field, although they don't pay attention to it. So to take a look at what this might look like, we present, um, say, an apple here on the neglected side. Then we present a, on the non-neglected side, and the participant indicates whether it's a fruit or an animal. Having seen the apple beforehand, they will be faster at identifying the pair, even though they won't consciously remember having seen the apple. So what does neglect tell us about attention? Well, attention is primarily a right hemisphere function. There are separate systems for spatial and object-based attention. No surprise there, as we know there is a what versus where pathway. We also know that unattended information receives at least some processing, and this is consistent with most of our models of attention. So where does that get us in the what versus where pathway? So we've talked about the what and where pathway um, in previous lectures on the visual system. Of course, the where pathway is known as the dorsal stream. It's characterized as a fast system processing motion with limited conscious awareness. If we have damage here, we can have hemispatial neglect, uh, akinetopsia, which is an inability to, per to perceive motion, and optic ataxia, which is an inability to track objects with our eyes. Now, uh, as we'll see in the ne next lecture, part of this where pathway is our ability uh, and here in the temporal parietal junction uh, is a part of what we call the orienting system. And what's interesting about the orienting system is it lines up also with um, some social psychological phenomenon uh, like perspective taking. So you see activation in the inferior, sorry, in the um, <coughs> in the temporal parietal junction, you see activation when somebody is trying to take the perspective of someone else to try to figure out what their perspective might be. And so again, as we think about those patients in Milan, they were changing their perspective um, of themselves, looking from different views, or what someone might see when they're coming from those different views. And so it's consistent with this idea of uh, the parietal being involved in um, perspective taking. So the ventral stream then, of course, is characterized as a slower system, processing detail with more conscious awareness. And dam damage here can result in agnosia or prosopagnosia, which is face blindness. So we will pick up in our next lecture on uh, attentional networks right here. Thank you.